Hey everyone, Rick here again with Rick's 135 scale models with my next project. What I'll be doing here is taking this Hobby Boss Leopard 2A6 that I built a while back and adding some NATO style camouflage netting. I'll be using the cheesecloth and then gluing that on the sides and then from there taking small dots of the stained paper and gluing them on the cheesecloth throughout it to create the effects of that standard NATO netting. Um, you can buy it, there's different ways you can acquire it. Um, this is a lot more affordable, yeah, a lot more tedious, but at the same time you can get a very personal result and uh, it looks real sharp once it's finished. Um, I will be kind of stumbling around though because I decided to hurt my finger so that I'll uh, put this out of action, but I'll still be able to get the project done. So anyway, let's get started and uh, show you how I go about it. Okay, so beginning the project, you're going to need a couple things. Um, what I did is I've got a piece of cheesecloth here and I have it down to a single sheet. I painted it olive drab um, on both sides so that it looks nice. Um, I tried to create an even coat, but not too even because you want it to have a little bit of a tattered, worn look. Um, what I'm going to be doing is taking it and cutting pieces out and laying it out on the vehicle. Now, the Hobby Boss Leopard kit, it's an okay kit, but there are some things on it that aren't so hot. So what's nice about doing this is I'll be able to cover up a lot of those things. Um, some of the things that I don't like about the kit would be the, uh, for lack of a better word, the non-skid plating they put up here. It's way too thick. Obviously, this is you know, an inch or two thick when it should be, you know, two or three millimeters at the most. Um, so I'll be able to cover all that up. And then also, when you're putting it on, you have to look at, well, how do they attach it? You just can't drape it all over the place um, because they want the smoke grenades to be exposed freely. Um, so they sometimes will put them around them, but they uh, still will function properly. Um, so looking for points that they would tie it to and uh, have it hanging. Uh, normally you'll see these in the fronts covered up pretty good um, over the top of the uh, lower hulls uh, got a lot of covering and then sometimes they'll hang down the front also one of the things you'll notoriously see is either it's hanging or it's a uh, rolled up roll right in front here and that's covers up down here so that the vehicle when it's being looked at straight on you're not seeing the uh, silhouette of the tracks and underneath the vehicle to make it obviously look like a tank. The whole goal being to detract uh, from the obvious big machinery to look more natural and not be able to easily be picked up by somebody's eye. Um, so the first part of this process will be uh, taking the cheesecloth and uh, figuring out what part you're going to start. I'm going to start on the turret um, and what I'm looking at is having a uh, it draped down to where it's tied up in this area kind of draping down through here uh, covering up like I said this area not covering up the uh, loaders periscope um, and then also kind of covering these a little bit because they're way too large uh, in, for realisticness and then um, coming in such a way to where they're not obscuring some of the siding mechanisms so I'm just going to kind of lay it out figure out kind of how I want it and then I'm going to cut it to fit. Um, the other thing about this process is you, know, you can mul make multiple layers uh, to make it work out really nice. Now once I start the gluing process what's nice about doing it this is that it will form a lot easier and then it hangs nice. Now if you look at a lot of real pictures of these vehicles uh, this product usually looks fairly tattered up um, and it looks a lot like scraps and pieces. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Now what I'm going to do is lay it flat. I'm going to take some water and put some white glue in there. 
to water it down and create a uh, watery glue. And once uh, this dries, it won't be visible on the model itself. And what's nice is once the decal gets wet, or actually the, the, the camel netting gets wet, it will look more natural to hanging. Okay, so just take a uh, wide bristle paintbrush, kind of go about spreading it around, getting the whole product damp with the glue. Pick it up from both ends. It's going to want to kind of crumple and do crazy things, and that's actually not a bad thing. It'll make it look a little more realistic once it's laid out on the vehicle.
Okay, so what I've done is I've put on the camo netting, I've let it dry, and then I started putting on a little bit of the small little dot. I've used a uh, 1.5 millimeter hole punch to punch them out and pulling them off the stained paper towels I've done, the, the different colors. I've got the green, a darker shade of green, and then the tan. And that will be these little pieces down here. So the next part of the process is you take your water white glue mix and you make it more than a, about 50-50, more about like 75% glue, 25% water. And then take an area you're going to go about and then lightly paint on a little bit of the uh, glue to make it damp. And then you're going to start a process of taking your little dots and getting a little bit of glue on them and then just tacking them down. This is just a very slow, tedious process, I know, but the results are nice. Now the nice thing is the white glue, once it dries, will be pretty much uh, impossible to see, but you can always hit it with a uh, little bit of flat, uh, the clear flat to dull it down if you have any kind of a shininess to it. And it's just a meticulous process of putting your dots on. The thicker, the more uh, potentially realistic it may look. But at the same time, a lot of these camo datings are pretty tore up. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And that's pretty much the process. So I'm going to jump ahead here, do a bunch, and then show you the final results. This will probably take a good two or three hours for this because uh, there's a lot of material and I'm looking for a kind of a heavier look, but uh, once you see it, you'll understand. So see you in a couple hours. Okay, so we've completed the model and added all the camouflage netting on. You can see how all the little pieces of paper here are glued on to look like the pattern that the netting has on it. And it's semi-tattered up. It's not like a brand new pristine piece. It's been used and taken off and used again. A meticulous process of gluing it all on. Uh, this is kind of what I would call like a medium level. You can do it a lot thicker if you want. Um, I was real happy with this. Kind of see how the barrels all covered up, different spots. You've got your lighter parts and darker, kind of a mix. The biggest thing here to remember is, is it should not look pristine and perfect. It, the goal is to make it look like a camouflage nature natural thing. And uh, a lot of times they'll have it covered up. You'll see these fenders exposed because they don't want the netting going into the track and getting ripped off. So a lot of times it's up and over like this. Um, sometimes they'll tape over this. Sometimes they'll have it lightly covered. Um, everything I've seen generally, it looks similar to this. Um, it's definitely a nice way to take a model and upgrade it. Uh, like I said before, it's very affordable. I mean, I spent just a couple of dollars here at the most. Um, and I've got a lot of material left where I could do four or five more models for, you know, maybe two more dollars. So, you know, financially, it's a very affordable way to make a model nice. Um, it, it takes a lot of time, but that's kind of the fun of it is, is personalizing it. Uh, you know, the whole idea is to have something unique and different. Um, from here, you know, I've got a little bit more work to do on this model to uh, dress it up more, uh, finishing up the periscopes, um, maybe putting some equipment on it, different things like that, uh, covering up all these things. But the, the whole point of this video was the uh, netting, and as you can see, it's done. Um, any questions or comments, please reach out to me, and I will uh, answer them as soon as I can. You can also find me now on Facebook. Just look up for Rick's 135th Scale Models. Um, I'm going to start posting there, 
daily progress, different uh, things I'm working on, and I have another avenue to reach out to people and continue networking all over the world. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to have some close-up pictures of this. Uh, enjoy, and see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.